themselves. How would you say the, I mean, just initial impressions compared to your initial impressions with other classes, how would you say this one stacks up? Is this your best one yet? You well, I kind of said it er earlier, I think we are bigger and more yeah. athletic than we, we've been at those type of positions. Uh, obviously, uh, you, you know, when, when you can put on a running back and go, God, that guy's pretty darn good. I mean, the, the guy's, then, uh, you know, you do that in the secondary. Th this is more of a, a blue collar, class I want to say you know linebackers you got to understand how can they can they play can they play with their knees bent offensive line one I think after seeing us in the national playoffs the last two years we surely needed to get bigger and more physical to do what we needed to do compared to the teams that we have I think we've done that I think there's a kid out of Pueblo I, uh, Ty McCauley I think has tremendous upside this kid is is uh uh, and I'm, in my opinion, a, a, a no-brainer type of guy that's going to develop and have a great work ethic, and uh, I think he's going to be an in integral part of the pack football from, for, for a long time. You mentioned from Alaska to, to Florida, but locally here you cleaned up a lot of Pueblo and Springs guys. Uh, how satisfied are you with the talent coming out of Colorado? You, you know, one, one of those things I think you got to understand in recruiting for us is that. Um, you got to be able to find matches, people that want to be here at CSU Pueblo. And you know, it, that's okay for the kids that don't want to be here. I mean, that's, that's, that's fine. And I'm going to have a lot of respect for what, what they're going to do. But I, you know, my, my concern is being able to have a guy that has a burning desire to go get their degree, a burning desire that's going to do the right thing socially, and then a burning desire that wants to play at a high level of playing playing this game of football. And those are guys we're, we're, we're looking for. I, I think it's not my job in recruiting, I think it's a misnomer to talk them into coming to school here. We're going to lay out the facts. They are fit for us by our players, but our players have a big input. If they tell me, hey, this guy's <laughs> acting like a jerk and trying to do those things, then we, we're not usually going to be able to re recruit them or offer them and do those things. So I'm really excited about the local talent that we got. With your track record the past couple of years, obviously some, some great success there. Have you noticed more excitement from some of the recruits when, when you've gone on recruiting visits uh, now that CSU Polo's maybe a little more on the map? I don't know. I, I think it, it's, it works both ways. Mm -hmm. I think he puts us on target with some of those better players that are looking at some Division One, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and are not quite sure, or maybe looking at the uh, Big Sky Conference and being able to put this on the map. But also, I think it, 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 it says something, and we, this first time we faced it, that there was about, you know, quite a few kids that realized that hey, maybe I'm not quite good enough to play here. They're going to go take their chances. Where, you know, I think part of our job as a coach, I believe in our program, is to develop kids, mm -hmm. develop them, take them from point A to point B. So I, I think it kind of worked both, both way on that. Besides just sheer talent, what do you look for in a recruit when you go out? Are there certain intangibles you're looking for or anything like that? I'm looking for the grades and the character of a guy. I, I know it's hard to judge and hard to be able to do that. The grades, I think, are a great indicator of, of who you are as a person and what you're going to do. What's your work ethic to be able to do that? Uh, every one of our guys that we signed out of this 26, our average GPA on this is over 3.0. I think it's really impressive to be able to say that. And I think that's part of the emphasis that we try to, try to place on that. If you grew up in like, Chicago or South Bend, Indiana, you want to play at Notre Dame. If you grew up in Texas, you want to be a Longhorn. Seems like a lot of these Pueblo kids want to be Thunder Wolves. Well, I think we've created an opportunity for them. And I think that's, you know, the Notre Dame, Texas, those guys have been around a long time in this program. And I, I think right now, uh, you, you know, the, the, the obvious is that we are developing a pride and tradition of what it takes to be a Pac football player. And ho hopefully we'll continue to do that. What was signing day like for you personally? Obviously, uh, I imagine the an the anticipation, the anxiety, uh, the nerves. Don't ask my coaches, okay? Because <laughs> they, they they knew I was on eggshells a little bit. Mm -hmm. and it, it, to me, it's like Christmas, and you're yeah. hoping these presents all come in, and you hope it's done at a certain time. You know, we didn't have any surprises, and that's a good thing. Okay. Uh, we, we we had some communications, some kids that I thought might be able to sign that did it. Uh, you know, but those are the way th it goes in re right. recruiting. Uh, we, 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 uh, you know, I'm, I'm really focused on the kids that really want to be here right. again. And so I'm glad they're here. I'm a lot more relaxed today than I was yesterday, to per se. And uh, I'm really excited that it worked out. Yesterday, the, uh, the, you know, on the D1 level, Ole Miss had a great day. Uh, the Ole Miss coach uh, on the Dan Patrick show was talking about 
how cutthroat some of the other SEC coaches were up to the last minute. Do you experience anything like that when it comes to signing day and recruiting at this level? No, I think uh, all our coaches that we have, we have a lot of great respect for each other and right. the programs. And you know, I, to tell you the truth, I, I, I'm not I'm not very smart, and you know that by <laughs> interviewing. So I I, I I want you to understand. I just have trouble figuring out what's going on here in my program. <laughs> so I can't really comment because I have no clue about what's going on in anybody else's program. Right. So the reality of this is that we just try to focus on what we're trying to do here. Yeah, I, I go ahead. What time were you up, or what time were you at the office? What kind of hours was that for you? Oh, uh, you know, I, I was here by six, and, and uh, uh, got a call from our kid in Florida that committed at, at uh, five oh five, and he, he was here. And uh, you know, the facts come up to our compliance director, Nikki Whitaker, and so uh, he called, and I asked him to call after they faxed it because there was any issues, and he was just really excited to be a part of it. Who, who went on the recruiting trip to Alaska? Well, we, you know, the, the, that's the great thing about uh, the power of the internet, that yeah. we, we didn't have to send anybody there, yeah. but I would have volunteered. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would have gone from Miami to uh, Anchorage in a heartbeat to yeah. be able to do that. But, you know, part of Division Two is that we spend a lot of our time here in the state. We right. try to visit every high school and try to get great connections. You know, we, don't, we just don't have a budget to be able to fly uh, coaches all over. You know, we'll, we'll do it. We fly coaches to Arizona because that's a mass population. But, you know, power of the internet and being able to see things really creates a great environment. Which of these recruits do you anticipate to contribute right away? You know, that, that's a great question. I, I, I really uh, I think that there, there's a handful of guys that, that be able to come in and compete. You know, but the, the reality of it and where we are in our program, probably most of them are going to be red-shirted. Uh, it, it's really a hard sell for me to say identify one or two that's going to be able to compete and get after it. Um, I think it's a little easier if you're in the skilled positions of the running backs and wide receivers. you got a better need in doing that. I do think that uh, the Zach Boyd kid out of Fort Lupton and the Mitch Colleen kid out of uh, Pomona, a wide receiver, because we've we got good depth there, but we, we need to find our sixth, seventh, eighth, type of receiver and so uh, those guys might have a chance I think with offensive line and defensive linemen um, it's, it's a little tougher to go compete but the, the kid Chris Bonner I'm looking the quarterback that's here on campus and Ty Tyree Burton they're already going to have a spring ball and offseason conditioning so I'd say those two got, got a chance to come in and play. You talked about Chris Bonner a couple of times. Uh, is this a guy that you expect to be competing for that number one job right away? I mean he's a, he's a JC transfer right? Right. And I, I know, you know, I, I think Brody McDonald's been in the wings right. waiting to try to do that. And so I felt like, and then uh, I think we got Caleb Flack and Aaron mm -hmm. Rossapelia, That's those are pretty darn good kids that mm -hmm. we signed in the last really two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they got some big shoes to fill in, in Ross's deal, but they're, they're chomping at the bit to be able to get that. I just felt like we needed to go and identify a, a, a little older quarterback since all these guys are really redshirt freshmen or, or sophomores. And Chris is one of those guys, and he's going to be thrown in the mix. And so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And, and Ross was a J.C. transfer, wasn't he? J Ross was a J.C. transfer. Did, did, with his success here, did, does that kind of maybe have you guys looking a little more at some of these J.C. guys? Or, or what makes you look at a J.C. guy? Well, I think by need. Uh -huh. You know, I think... To me, it's like you go to the grocery store and figure out whether you need need to go get some apples, oranges, or right. you know whatever type of vegetables. Well, here our philosophy is when we go to the grocery store, we're going to build it with high school guys, and that's the way we, we, we've done it. I like to build it through Colorado high school guys and try to piecemeal it to make us be able to compete nationally. But our nucleus is going to be built on Colorado high school guys. Now, if you have a need, like we felt like we needed a need, right. we were going to go find a JC guy. That's where we are in our program. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we might be able to get some other transfers. We, you know, our recruiting is not quite done yet. Um, will, there'll be some other guys that will come through the cracks. Derek Jackson of Pueblo West was a huge high school star. Um, did you guys make a push for him, and how, how much was he looking to come here? You know, we, we had his brother here, and we had a great opportunity. Derek's one heck of a player, and I hope he has a great exec success except for one game, you know. And mm -hmm. we, we did try to recruit Derek. We did uh, able to offer him a scholarship, and, and uh, you know, but Derek, 
in my opinion, you know, wanted to try to go get away, and that's okay. And, and, and I wish him the best of luck. And uh, the, the Rojas kid out of Pueblo West, I mean, that's why basketball has 32 different flavors, right? Not everybody goes in and orders, orders the same thing. So, you know, those kids felt like they wanted to have a chance to do that, and I wish them the best of luck, and, uh, except for one game. Fantastic.